This is section 9.7. We're going to talk about temperature and conversions between the U.S. and metric systems. First, let's look at converting length from the metric to the U.S. system. If we're starting in the metric system, we have one meter is equal to approximately one and nine hundredths of a yard, or to three and twenty-eight hundredths of a foot. One kilometer is equal to sixty-two hundredths of a mile. Then if we're going the other direction, if we have one inch, that's equal to approximately two and fifty-four hundredths of a centimeter. One foot is equal to thirty hundredths of a meter, and one mile is equal to one and sixty-one hundredths of a kilometer. Let's do a couple of examples of converting from one unit of length to another. If we start out with twelve kilometers and we want to convert that to miles, again we need to find a unit fraction that relates kilometers and miles. So we actually have two different things that relate kilometers and miles from our list on the previous page. We have one kilometer is equal to sixty-two hundredths of a mile, or we have one and sixty-one hundredths of a kilometer is equal to one mile. Now for this one, for our unit fraction, we're going to end up with kilometers being on the bottom, since that's the unit we're starting with. Now how you do this is up to you, but to me it's a little bit easier to end up with a nice unit of one on the bottom so that we don't have to divide by a decimal. So I would use this equation since it has the nice one kilometer. Now we do have to set this up for our unit fraction so that that kilometer ends up on the bottom, like this. So now we can take 12 kilometers, again we're putting that over one, times 62 hundredths of a mile over one kilometer. Now our kilometers cancel out, and again, with what we did here, we just have ones on the bottom. So now we just have a multiplication problem. We could do it using this one, it would just mean that we would be dividing by a decimal, which is a little bit harder. Now we need to multiply 12 times 62 hundredths. and we end up with an initial product of 744. We do have to put our decimal point in. We had zero places here and we had two places here, so we're going to put it two decimal places in our answer. That gives us seven and forty-four hundredths of a mile. Now what if we're going from inches to centimeters? Well in our list we only had one equation that related inches and centimeters, and that said that two and fifty-four hundredths of a centimeter was equal to one inch. So this time we're stuck with using this one whether we like it or not. We need to write our unit fraction so the inches are on the bottom since that's the unit we're starting with. So this is going to work out okay anyway. So our unit fraction is going to be two and fifty-four hundredths of a centimeter over one inch. Now we're multiplying that by the six inches. And our inches cancel out. And again on the bottom here we just have ones. So this is just six times two and fifty-four hundredths of a centimeter. We don't have to write the ones because they were in the denominator. Now if we multiply six times two and fifty-four hundredths, carry the two there, now carry the three. Now our decimal point, since we had none here and we had two here, we're going to have two decimal points in our answer. That gives us fifteen and twenty-four hundredths of a centimeter. Oops, and I forgot to an write the answer from this one in. Now for capacity, and remember that capacity is really the same as volume, Again, we have several different comparisons between the metric and the U.S. system. This one goes from liters to quarts, and notice there's a kind of a corresponding one down here that goes from quarts to liters. This one goes from liters to gallons. This one goes from gallons to liters, so those two correspond. And then we have one that goes from milliliters to fluid ounces. So these would be for smaller measurements. So let's do a couple of conversion problems with our volume measurements. If we want to go from 
34 quarts to liters. Again, we had two different equations that related quarts and liters. Now for our unit fraction, we want to have quarts on the bottom and liters on the top. Since we're starting with quarts, we want the quarts on the bottom. So it would work out really nice if we used the equation where we had the one quart so that we're just dividing by one. And that one was that 95 hundredths of a liter is equal to one quart. So let's use that one in our unit fraction. Now we have 34 quarts over one times 95 hundredths of a liter over one quart. Our quarts cancel out and since we only have ones on the bottom then we just have a multiplication problem here. We have 34 times 95 hundredths of a liter. If we multiply our 34 times our 95 hundredths, see we get 20 there, so carry the 2, that gives us 17. This is 36, carry the 3, 27 plus 3 is 30. Carry the 1 there. So now our initial product is 3,230. If we put in our decimal point, we had two decimal points here, none there, so we end up with two decimal places in our answer. So here, we could write this as 32 and 30 hundredths, or we could just write it as 32 and 3 tenths of a liter. Now let's go from liters to gallons. Again, here we had two different equations that related these. We know in our unit fraction we're going to want liters on the bottom. So let's use the equation that had one liter in it. And that was that one liter is equal to 26 hundredths of a gallon. So that means we have our 26 hundredths of a gallon on the top, our one liter on the bottom. That's our unit fraction. So now we're taking our 20 liters from here over 1 times 26 hundredths of a gallon over 1 liter. Our liters cancel out and the unit we're left with is gallons. So now we have 20 times 26 hundredths of a gallon. We don't have anything in our denominator because those were both 1's. So we just need to multiply 20 times 26 hundredths and Multiply here, we get 0 and 12, and then here we get 0 and 4. This ends up being 520, then if we put our decimal places in, we had none here and 2 here, so we end up with 2 decimal places. That gives us 5 and 20 hundredths of a gallon. Again, we could write it with this last 0, or we could just leave that off and make it 5 and 2 tenths of a gallon. Okay, one more when we're talking about weight or mass in the metric system and the U.S. system. We have four different equations here that will let uh, us come up with our unit fractions. So we can either go from kilograms to pounds, we can go from grams to ounces, or we can go another way from kilograms to pounds or from grams to ounces. So if we're converting from kilograms to pounds, Let's write our unit fraction again so that we have one kilogram on the bottom. That means that we want to use we want to use the equation that had one kilogram equal to two and twenty hundredths of a pound. That means on the top of this fraction we have two and twenty hundredths of a pound. Now we're multiplying three kilograms over one times two and twenty hundredths of a pound over one kilogram. Our kilograms cancel and we only have ones on the bottom. So now we just have three times two and twenty hundredths of a pound. And notice this is the same, again, since we have that zero there, we could actually write this as three times two and two tenths of a pound. That just makes our multiplying a little bit shorter. So now we have a six and a six. We have one decimal place here and none here, so we have one decimal place in our answer. That gives us six and six tenths of a pound. Now if we're going from ounces to grams, again we have two different equations we can use. So let's look at what we want our unit fraction to look like. 
So we want our unit to have ounces on the bottom and grams on the top. And again, it would be easier if we could make the one on the bottom be a one. So let's use the equation that said that 28 and 35 hundredths of a gram was equal to one ounce. And that means our number on the top here will be 28 and 35 hundredths. So now we have 16 ounces over 1 times 28 and 35 hundredths of a gram over 1 ounce. Our ounces cancel and we still have just ones on the bottom so this gives us 60 this gives us 16 times 28 and 35 hundredths of a gram and if we do that multiplication and we have 6 times 5 is 30, carry the 3, it's 18 plus 3 is 21, carry the 2, 6 times 8 is 48 plus 2 is 50, 6 times 2 is 12 plus 5 is 17, and then in this row we have 1 times 5, 1 times 3, 8, and 2. Here's our initial product, and again we had no decimal places in this factor and 2 in this factor, so we would have 2 in our product. So we get 453 and 60 hundredths of a gram, or we could write this as 453 and 6 tenths of a gram. Now we're going to talk about temperatures. We have a U.S. measure of temperature, which is Fahrenheit and Celsius is the metric measure of temperature. If we're going from Celsius to Fahrenheit, we just have a little formula that we use. We have one with a fraction and one with a decimal. So either way, we're going to take our Celsius temperature times either 9 fifths or 1.8, and then we're going to add 32 to that result. Here's an example. We want to convert 60 degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit and we're going to round our answer to the nearest tenth of a degree. So let's use the formula with the decimal in it. So all we're really doing here is replacing the C with the 60 degrees. This is just like having replacement values that we worked on earlier. So here we have our 60 degrees now our order of operations says that we have to do this multiplication first. So 1.8 times 60 is going to give us, let's see, 48 and carry the 4 give us, gives us 1080 and then if we put in our one decimal place we actually end up with 108 so we have 108 plus 32, and if we add those two, we end up with 140. And we want to put our final answer in degrees, so we can say 60 degrees Celsius is equal to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Now what if we want to go the other way, if we want to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius? Well then our formulas look just a little bit different. We're going to start in either case by taking our Fahrenheit temperature and subtracting 32. And then we're going to take that result and multiply it either times 5 ninths, if we like fractions, or we're going to divide it by 1 and 8 tenths. Let's do an example. If we want to convert 20 degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius, and we're going to round to the nearest tenth of a degree. This time let's use the fraction formula. And again, here we're just using the F is our Fahrenheit temperature, and we're going to use a replacement value for F of 20 degrees. So we have five nines here, and here we're replacing the F with a 20 degrees. Now order of operations again says that we have to simplify inside the parentheses first. So 
So we would be taking 20 minus 32, that would give us a negative 12. Now we can do our multiplication. And since we have a fraction here, let's write the negative 12 as negative 12 over 1. Now in the, our numerator we have 5 times negative 12, in our denominator we have 9 times 1. And let's see what we can cancel out. 12 and 9 both have a factor of 3. So let's cancel out that factor of 3 and then we have negative 5 times 4 on the top. We have a 3 left on the bottom and that gives us a negative 20 thirds. Now in our problem it said to round to the nearest tenth of a degree. That means that they want this in decimal form. So let's go ahead and divide our 20 by 3. 3 goes into 26 times and we get 18 and if we subtract we get a 2. We're going to take this out to the nearest hundredth to the hundredth place so that we can round to the nearest tenth. So 3 goes into 26 times again. We get another 2. We get another 6 here. Okay, now we've taken it out to the hundredths place. That's as far as we need to go. If we round 6 and 66 hundredths to the tenths place, that would give us 6 and 7 tenths. That means that 20 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 6 and 7 tenths of a degree Celsius.